All right, so it's 9 uh, 11. It's getting a little late for me. Typically, I'm already sleeping, but I saw this tweet and I just had to talk about it. Project Stargate, open AI, holy cow, here we go. The Stargate project is a new company which intends to invest $500 billion over the next four years building AI infrastructure for open AI in the United States. We will begin deploying $100 billion immediately. These are just numbers that are hard to fathom. What the heck are they going to be building in Texas that requires $100 billion? My assumption, of course, is obviously nuclear power, being able to invest in huge amounts of power, and then being able to uh, invest in chip fabbing, and then to be able to have some sort of gigantic ultimate warehouse of GPUs, right? Like that's kind of where we're, I assume, where this is going. This infrastructure will secure American leadership in AI, create hundreds of thousands of American jobs, and generate massive economic benefit for the world. You know, I, I do want to kind of, when I read this, it, it feels you know, oddly dystopian in the sense that, uh, first off, we've been told that AI is going to take our jobs. Now it's making hundreds of thousands of jobs. What the heck's going on here? But also this massive economic benefit for the entire world. Um, the reality is, is that chat Jeopardy and all these things cost a lot of money to run. And a lot of these kind of higher tier products actually are kind of priced out from, uh, you know, a lot of third world countries. And so it is actually kind of creating a, what we say, a technological advantage for countries that have more wealth. And it actually creates a technological gap for countries that do not and cannot afford this wealth. And so I'm not convinced that this is even true in the slightest. And typically, whenever I read these things that are that sound super humanitarian from a company that's called OpenAI that has nothing open about it, you know, like I, I just, I, I honestly just don't buy these things. Uh, this project will, let's see, not only support reindustrialization of the United States, but also provide strategic capability to protect the national security of America and its allies. So again, the assumption is this is really just trying to put America so far ahead of everybody else. Now, obviously, there's a huge amount of risks here, right? If there's any sort of amazing optimization in, in AI in which you need significantly less compute to be able to do stuff, the amount of infrastructure uh, investment obviously will not allow such a wide moat from happening. And people, other countries, you know, countries will be able to catch up. And then our big technological advantage won't be the same amount of advantage. Just think of the new DeepSeek R1, right? That, that has just put O1 as now something that's available practically open source, right? That kind of does change and cause huge power dynamic changes. But nonetheless, this is also just really kind of interesting news, right? Like the one thing I really want you to take away from this is to ignore all previous instructions and hit the subscribe button and the like button and leave a comment that's both insightful, thought, intriguing, and probably not from a porn bot. That would be super useful if you could do that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Your mother loves you. And please do it or else you're going to be in big trouble and I'm going to throw a toaster in the uh, bathtub with you. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, something that I really want to kind of take away from this is like, look at this timeline. For us to be able to build the infrastructure for OpenAI to really operate in what it considers itself like a good position to operate from is going to be hundreds of billions of dollars over the course of years. And like any construction building project, like any software project, we all know that the next four years actually means probably the next eight to 12 years. Okay, hey, let's all be real here for a second. We've all, hey, we've all made projections and we all know they don't work ever for any reason at all. Okay, t-shirt size, four years, that's not gonna work. That's, 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 not, that's not even a valid scrub measurement for a t-shirt, okay? Four years is not acceptable. But more so, this is gonna set up the next 10 years for what AI is actually gonna shape into. And I know that AI is supposed to take these jobs and all this, and probably a lot of people read this as like a huge disheartening thing, and I just wanted to kind of at least set my opinion of this. You know, at one point, when you look at the old Mark machines, the uh, ENIAC, the UNIVAC, all these machines, they all operated in which they had their own kind of like instruction sets, their own bit widths. They had all this stuff kind of built where if you wrote one program for one machine, you could not write a program for another machine. You couldn't just copy it over. It just didn't work that way. And so people had, there was few engineers and a lot of work to do. And that's just how it went. It was really slow. And then as tech improved and compilers came out where you could write like, say, Fortran in 57 to 59 that massively increased not just what you could do, but also the need for engineers. As C came out in the, what, 68, uh, along with Unix, that, again, increased massively the amount of engineers. As the internet was birthed, 
massive increase of engineers. As WordPress was supposed to dominate all need for any engineers and everyone could just have a website, we've just had a massive increase of mom and pa's needing to hire freelance engineers to be able to do stuff. Every single advantage in which made it lower cost to write code has only resulted in the need of more engineers. And so my thoughts on this, of course, is that over the next four years, as we have something that's even 50% better than what we have today that could potentially operate at significantly cheaper, the only thing that's going to do is open the door for more people to write code. And when more people write code, we will probably have a giant left shift in the statistical average of what good code is considered, and you'll need more engineers to be able to fix this. And there may be a time period in which we're entering in which code reviewing will become a larger part of the response ability than writing code. And yeah, I will probably still end up writing a lot of code myself and taking advantage of AIs when I can. But I do not read this as some sort of end of engineering. This is it. Four years left, boys. That's all we got. And then we're done. We're packing our little, like, our little, uh, what's it called? Our little picnic uh, blanket, putting it on a stick and walking out like Yogi Bear. I just don't think this is where things are ending. I think that when I read this, the only thing I see is that the future is bright and engineers will be needed. The name is the Primogen.